one of the required skills in answering uh, or solving for x in a trig function is that you should know how to solve equations from uh, your algebra algebra equations like so here are the trigonometric identities that we are using in this topic we have the reciprocal identity we have the quotient identity and we have the Pythagorean identity so all these identities we will use this in solving for x and uh, later on in um, proving identities in trigonometry now we have here sine theta um, it's Trigonometric identity is one over cosecant theta, which you are all familiar with. And the rest here, you should be able to copy this in your notes, and you should be able to have this all the time whenever we're using um, problems involving trigonometric, um, trigonometric equation. Now, in the first example that I'm going to show you, we have a trig function. So now, we don't just use quadratic equation or um, linear equation using x and y. Now we're using sine and cosine and tangent and cotangent and so on. So in our first trig function, I have 1 minus 2 cosine x is equal to 0. And we need to solve for x for this trig function. Now, don't get too intimidated with the new notations that you are using or you are working with because you can relate this to algebra. That's why I have here my trigonometry version and my algebra version so that um, you, can, you can think of an algebraic equation that is related to your trig function. And this is how I'm going to relate it to algebra. So trig function, I have 1 plus 2 cosine x equal to 0. I can change it into an algebraic equation by ignoring cosine. So if I ignore cosine, I have 1 minus 2x is equal to 0. And the goal is to solve for x for uh, this algebraic equation. And when you see that it's 1 minus 2x equal to 0, it is less intimidating. And I know all of you should be, or all of you know how to solve for x in an algebraic expression or equation like this. So you subtract 1 on both sides, you divide both by negative 2, or divide both sides by negative 2, so you'll have x is equal to 1 half. So this, the steps that I used here is a familiar step that all of you should be able to do. Now how are we going to translate it to trigonometry? So in trigonometry, instead of just x, we have cosine x. So all we have to do is to ignore cosine and solve a regular x in this equation. So I will subtract 1 on both sides because I need to have x by itself. And in this case, cosine x. So I need to have cosine x by itself. So I have negative 2 cosine x is equal to negative 1. And negative 2 is still with cosine x, so I need to get rid of it by dividing both sides by negative 2. So I have cosine x is equal to positive 1 half. Now your solution is not going to end here because we are solving for x and not for cosine x. And to solve for x, all you have to do is to use your unit circle. And in your unit circle, um, you need to find all the values of cosine, which is equal to 1 half. And in this case, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 are the values of your x or cosine x when it's 1 half in the unit circle. So this is the added step um, in solving trigonometric function. You will need your unit circle to finish your solution. Unlike in algebra, once you found x, that's it. But in trigonometry, once you found cosine x or sine x or tangent x or cotangent x, you will need to use the, trigonomet um, the unit circle to solve for the exact values of those trig functions. Now for this example, I have sine x plus square root of 2 equal to negative sine x. And to solve this function, I have my trig version and my algebra version. I'm going to convert it into algebra version so that it's a lot easier to solve for x. So I'm just going to ignore sine in my trig function, and I'll end up with x plus square root of 2 equals negative x. And solving for x for this algebraic equation, I need to have x by itself. So I'm going to add x on both sides so that x is on this side of the equation and the real number is on the other side of the equation. So I'll end up with 2x plus square root of 2 equal to 0. Now I need to get rid of square root of 2 by subtracting square root of 2 on both sides. Now I have 2x equals negative square root of 2. 
And since 2 is still with x, I need to divide both sides by 2. Therefore, x is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2. And I'm pretty sure you are all familiar with negative square root of 2 over 2 when we translate it in trigonometry. And that's what we're going to do in our solution for our trig function. So sine x, negative sine x will be my x. So to get rid of negative sine x on this side, so add sine x on both sides. And to get rid of square root of 2, I subtracted square root of 2 on both sides. So I end up with 2 sine x equals negative square root of 2. Divide both sides by 2 so that I have sine x by itself. And now I have negative square root of 2 over 2. And once again, you will need your unit circle to find the exact values of sine x when it's equal to negative square root of 2 over 2. And they are 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So those are the angle measures that will give you a value of negative square root of 2 over 2 for sine. And here's example number 2. So for this example, it's going to be more complicated as we move on, just for you to be familiar with a lot of uh, patterns in solving trig function. And now we have secant x cosecant x equal to cosecant x. So we have two um, inverses, this inverse of secant and an in, um, inverse of sine and inverse of cosine, which is secant and cosecant. So to change it into an algebraic expression, since I have secant x and cosecant x, both of them are x's, so I'm just going to change it into x sub 1 and x sub 2 so that you can visualize it in algebra. So now I have x sub 1 times x sub 2 equal to x sub 2. And I need to solve for x, so I need to um, have x by all the x's on this side and the real number on the other side. So I subtracted x sub 2 on both sides, and I end up with x sub 1 times x sub 2 minus x sub 2 equal to 0. Now, in this case, I can factor this out because they have a common factor, which is x sub 2. So since it's common, I can use GCF by factoring, and I have x sub 2 outside, and inside, I only have x sub 1 minus 1 because that's how I factor it out. So now by using the zero product property, I have two values of x, or two possible values of x. x sub 2 is equal to 0, and the other one will be x sub 1 equals positive 1. So now, I'm going to translate it to trigonometry. So in trigonometry, since I have to have the function by 0, or equal to 0, so I have to subtract cosecant x on both sides, and I'll end up with secant x cosecant x minus cosecant x equals 0. And just like what I did here, I factored it out because the common term or common factor is cosine x. I pulled it out, and I have secant x minus 1 equal to 0. And since I'm solving for x, I can use the zero product property. So I have cosecant x is equal to 0, and secant x minus 1 is equal to 0. And solving for secant x, secant x is equal to 1. So I have, I need to use my unit circle for cosecant x and secant x. Now in your unit circle, cosecant and secant is not in there. You only have sine and cosine and tangent, or you can solve for tangent, of course, for the unit circle. Now to find the cosecant, or cosecant x when it's equal to 0, you just need to find the inverse of cosecant, which is sine and the inverse of secant, which is cosine, find its reciprocal that will equal to 0 and equal to 1, and you will have x equal to 0. So the only value of x for this function or trig function is equal to 0. And you can verify it using your unit circle later on. So this is how you solve example number 3. And for example number four, I have two cosine squared x plus cosine x minus one equal to zero. And again, I'm going to have two versions, my algebra and my trig version. And to my algebra version, I have two x squared plus x minus one equal to zero. And we know that it's a quadratic equation that is factorable. So to factor two x squared plus x minus one, you have two x minus one times x plus one equal to zero. And again, by using the zero product property, we can have two possible values of x. So we have two x minus one equal to zero and x plus one equal to zero. And solving for x, the first x value will be one half and the second x value will be negative one. So that is because we have a quadratic equation. And you know that in a quadratic equation, you will have two possible values of x when you're solving quadratic function. And then we're going to translate it to trigonometry. So 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equal to 0 looks really complicated. However, since you can visualize algebraic expression in your head, 
you and in the board right here because I already showed it, you can factor it out and you'll have 2 cosine x minus 1 times cosine x plus 1, which is similar to your factors right here. I just replace x by cosine x. So now that I have two factors using the zero product property because I'm solving for x, I have two cosine x minus one equal to zero, and I have cosine x plus one is equal to zero. And for my first cosine x, I have one half, and my second cosine x will be negative one. So I need to use my unit circle again, and my unit circle for cosine x equals one half, I have angles pi over three and five pi over three for the first values of x, and for the second set of x, I have pi. So pi is the only um, angle that will give you negative 1 for cosine x. So therefore, my x values for this function is pi over 3, 5 pi over 4, 3, and the value of pi.